I'm Nick Pettit. And I'm Jason Cipher. And you're watching The Treehouse Show, your weekly dose of internets where we talk about all things web design, web development, and more. In this episode, we'll be talking about flat UI colors, things you shouldn't be doing with jQuery, usability, and much more. Let's check it out. Well, first up is flat UI colors. And of course, we've talked about flat UI a little bit on the show. It's oh, basically so much. the opposite of skeuomorphism. So skeuomorphism is where... It's right up there with CSS frameworks on there's a list of things we talk about a lot on here. And, and icon fonts. And responsive websites. That's right. Anyway, skeuomorphism is where stuff looks super realistic in uh, a digital interface. It's basically trying to mirror a real world interface, so something like iCal on OS X, where it has like all this leather and papery texture and stuff. Whereas flat design is basically a response to that. So it's what you see in like Windows 8 and uh, you know a lot of other websites these days. So these flat UI colors basically allow you to uh, draw upon this pre-made color palette and create your website with flat UI in mind. So it, they just have these really nice, well put together uh, colors that go really well together. And you can click on each one of these. So I'll click on uh, Midnight Blue here, and it'll say Copied. So if you click on one of these, it will copy it to your clipboard, and you can choose the format up here. So I've chosen hexadecimal with the hash or pound sign there. And so that's what's been copied into my clipboard. So it's a pretty handy tool. Uh, I will admit I actually used this uh, this week. To oh, build. you're willing to admit that? I am willing to admit it. I know, big, big admission here. Uh, no, I used it to build a, uh, a website early, earlier this week. This is Jason's surprise face. And uh, it worked really well. I was able to just like click, copy these uh, colors in, and it sped up my development a little bit because I was able to just like put together the color scheme really quickly and try out different things what, rapidly. I, I like some of these names here. Yeah. Wet Asphalt. That's right. I, they should uh, they should name one after you, Jason. Ooh, this one's called Nephritis. That sounds like a disease. Or Sorry, I can't come to work today. My nephritis is flaring up. They have Peter River. I mean, I don't understand why it's not Jason River. Because <laughs> obviously... Yeah. You know, Jason River. Jason. Selling tickets. That's right. N next up, over on the Flippin' Awesome blog, we have five things you should stop doing with jQuery. This is a wonderful list of, you guessed it, things that you should stop doing with jQuery, and more importantly, why you should stop doing them. Now, we're not going to get into everything that they say on the show, uh, in, I'm sorry, say in the blog post here, but number one, stop using document ready. It's 2013, we don't have to use document ready all the time. The reason that you would want to use document ready is back in the day when you put all of your scripts in the head of a web page, it would have to wait until the rest of the page and scripts have loaded. But of course now you put all of your scripts towards the bottom and right. you know that the document is indeed ready by the time you're ready to execute that jQuery. Yeah, unless you're uh, using the async attribute. Boom. Uh, next, choose the right iterator for the job. jQuery provides a wealth of different iterators that you can use depending on what you need to do. So there's a nice description of each of the different ones as well as the context in which you would use them. I'm a big fan of the map iterator, which will iterate through an array, add that all to a new one. Boom, done. Anyway, bunch of great advice on here. Just head on over to the blog post at flippinawesome.com. And you can also find it in the show notes on YouTube at youtube.com slash go treehouse or on iTunes. iTunes. Search for Treehouse, leave us reviews. On iTunes. Yeah. All right, next up is the young person's guide to programming in Minecraft. Of course, Minecraft is the popular computer game uh, that was created, I think, a couple years ago and was developed very uh, in a very open fashion. People could actually participate in the alpha and the beta, and, and it's since been released, but it's a, it's a pretty cool game. Nick, uh, if I am not specifically a young person, can I still read this guide and get something out of it? I, I think so, Jason. I, I don't know why it's specifically targeted at young people, but of course, yeah, you can get something out of it. So 
Minecraft is this computer game where you mine stuff and then you craft stuff. So that's kind of an explanation of Minecraft. Getting into what this article is actually about, uh, basically you can create what are called mods or modifications for Minecraft. And one such mod is called Scriptcraft. And in Scriptcraft, you can actually program in the game using simple JavaScript statements. And using those, you can add new items, you can change uh, the behavior of the game, and you can actually build meta games on top of Minecraft, build these simpler, uh, you know, sim simple games within Minecraft. Uh, it suggests learning JavaScript and then jumping into it. Of course, you can learn JavaScript on teamtreehouse.com. Shameless self plug. That's right. Um, and then after you learn JavaScript, you can jump into Scriptcraft, and they teach you how to do variables, functions, and a whole variety of other uh, other things in Minecraft. And eventually, you will be able to actually build stuff. So I think this is um, pretty neat. You know, it's not specifically related to web development, but of course, JavaScript is a very popular language in the web development space. It's what we use to make things happen on the front end of the browser. And uh, I think this is a really cool way to get into JavaScript and get yourself familiar with the language. And that will make you a stronger programmer um, when it comes to stuff on the web. Very, so, very nice. Interesting stuff. Next up, we have a tool called Framer. This is a prototyping tool for animation and interaction on desktop and mobile. Now, this is being billed as an alternative to Flash or Keynote when prototyping an application. And it's going to be used more for the interaction of the site. So they got some great examples here on the site. So you click through. First example uh, is the Google search application. And if I, if I mouse in here, you can see, boom, it automatically animates up. And you can kind of just get a feel for how the application is going to work. Uh, the next example that they have is something that you should be familiar with, Facebook. Pretty much everybody is on Facebook, so you click that little three-button menu we've talked about before on the show, and it kind of shows you how the news feed and events and basically everything on the side of the page is going to work. So this is really not going to be for creating full applications. It's going to be used just to get an idea of how the interactions and animations are going to play out on the site. And interaction and animation is quickly becoming a lot bigger in the field of creating applications. So something to keep on the radar in, in case this is what you're doing. And I think it actually pairs really nicely with flat design in that you know it's much easier to create uh, more complex animations because you're not spending so much time like getting the textures or the round corners or all these different design details just right. But you can actually communicate a lot with nice smooth animations. So I like it. I think it's pretty cool. I think it pairs really nicely with a port wine. So do you, Jason. Thank you. Uh, next up is a usability checklist. It's in beta. I'm not really sure what's in beta. The specifically. checklist? Yeah, that looks like the checklist itself is in beta. Maybe there's more things they'll want to add to the checklist. It's possible, uh, but I really like this uh, checklist quite a lot. Basically, before you uh, you launch a website and you know you want to make sure that everything is of quality, you can go through this checklist and just kind of get a sanity check and and say like you know what is the uh, the first impression. Um, when people hit the home page, or you know, is my site easy to navigate? Am I hitting all the the check boxes here with accessibility? And um, you know, am I doing a good job with search, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? It's a pretty exhaustive checklist, and I think it's really good even for beginners or uh, people that are much more advanced with web development because. There's so many things to remember these days. I mean, there's so much stuff that goes into a website that it's great to just have a nice handy checklist like this to make sure you're you're covering all the bases. Yeah, definitely. So, pretty cool stuff. Next up, we have an application called Ghost Lab. Now, this is a paid application. They're not sponsoring the show, full disclosure. Just thought that this was cool and that we would mention it. So, what this does, it's it's pretty interesting. You set up a site inside of Ghost Lab, you know, drag it in, and then it will launch an HTTP server for you. You can then connect a browser to it, 
or multiple browsers is where it really shines. And then as you're scrolling through on one browser, it automatically updates all the other browsers. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, this is wonderful if you are trying to test mobile sites. Because even as you're filling in a form on one browser, it'll automatically fill it in on another as well. And if that weren't enough, you can automatically debug the stuff live. Now, you are going to need a browser that supports JavaScript in order to get this to work. Uh, but definitely go ahead and check it out. Um, synchronized testing is really, really the big deal. Uh, as well as inspection. You can see immediately what's causing the problem in the browser if you're getting some weird behavior or otherwise. Immediately inspect it and see what's going on. So, This pairs really nice nicely with that uh, usability checklist because you can go through and make sure you're covering all of those checkboxes in every browser. Also, a Chardonnay. Hmm. Next up, we've got some handy... From the wine region <laughs> we've of got... France. Some handy SAS mix-ins. Uh, and basically, SAS is a, uh, a language that compiles to CSS, so it can be read by the browser, but it's a much easier way to, to write your styling because you can use things like variables and uh, these pieces of code that are called mix-ins. So you can mix in uh, this SAS code into your SAS code uh, very fluidly. Um, they have mix-ins here that are for responsive breakpoints. So if you're building a website for uh, that uses responsive design, which really almost any website you're building should probably be using responsive design. That's a handy mix-in to use. Uh, they also have mix-ins for targeting devices with, uh, with retina displays or high-resolution displays. And that's Actually, pretty simple to do. There's just a lot of little steps here you got to remember, and so that just encapsulates all of them really easily. And then you can go ahead and use it here as a SAS mixin, and you just say, you know, I want to go ahead and include this 2x version of the image, and it will go ahead and expand out that SAS into this CSS here. Um, they have a couple of others. There's a clear fix, one for box sizing, border radii, which I mean, that can get really complicated if you're working with, uh, you know, a lot of different browsers here. So it covers all of those. Um, but pretty cool stuff. And, you know, if you use SAS, this is definitely a handy set of mix-ins for you to use. That would pair pretty well with Ghost Lab, which we just talked about, because it does support SAS. Or a nice Merlot. I would have suggested a Pinot, but, you know, your taste is your taste. Next up, we have a JavaScript library called hammer.js. Uh, this is a library for multi-touch gestures, and I, I think it's incredibly well-named. Uh, also, I really, really love the, the art on the site. Can't touch this. Exactly. So this is going to be really useful if you're working on you know, a phone, tablet, any device that supports multi-touch. The Hammer JavaScript library will allow you to very easily attach elements, uh, attach certain events to elements. So if somebody is swiping left, you can attach that to a specific div on the page, capture that, and perform some sort of functionality when somebody swipes left. Now, this is a great library, and it's pretty small. It's only three kilobytes when gzipped. So check this out. They've got really thorough documentation, and it is a great library. So that's about all we got today. That is it for this week's episode. I'm at NickRP on Twitter. And I am at Jay Cipher. If you like this show, please rate us in iTunes. Search for The Treehouse Show. You can also find show notes and more on YouTube at youtube.com slash gotreehouse. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos like this one about iOS, Android, HTML, CSS, business, and so much more, Ruby, of course. Of course. This guy right here. Be sure to check us out at Team Treehouse. Dot com. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next week. Stay tuned for our Wine Review podcast. If you'd like to see more advanced videos and tutorials like this one, go to teamtreehouse.com and start learning for free.